I have a bombshell for you regarding a stunning new development that threatens to shake the British monarchy to its core. Word breaking out of Westminster today is that British MPs are furiously circulating a parliamentary petition seeking government authorization to pursue a highly unprecedented defamation lawsuit against Prince Harry himself over his constant criticisms of the royal family. Let's dive into the explosive details for those just joining us. Tensions have reached a boiling point in recent years between Harry and other senior royals like King Charles and Prince William. Ever since stepping down as working royals, Harry has taken numerous public potshots at the Windsor through explosive television interviews and a forthcoming tell memoir. He's accused them of racism, neglect, toxicity, and more in extremely damaging broadsides that have inflicted deep wounds both here in the UK and worldwide. However, it's now emerged Harry's antics may have crossed a red line where Britain's MPs are concerned. According to my extremely well-placed sources, Parliament has been quietly building momentum for some form of accountability against Harry's consistent character assassination campaigns targeting his closest relatives, and it culminated this week in a petition pushing the legislature to grant the UK Attorney General authority to directly sue Harry for defamation of character on behalf of the Crown. Unheard of due to Harry's royal status, proponents argue, as a public figure continuously disparaging public institutions like the monarchy, he can and should be held legally responsible when factual evidence is lacking or claims are demonstrably false. Over 100 Conservative and Labour MPs have already lent their signatures to the measure in a totally bipartisan show of solidarity. Some cite duty to defend cherished British institutions from unwarranted slander. Reactions have been explosive with even some royal experts voicing cautious support. While an unprecedented step, Harry has tested normal boundaries of discretion for too long, said esteemed commentator Robert Jobson. Royals usually keep private disputes private, but he's knowingly inflicted reputational harm through global media. Accountability may be needed, an insider added. The palace is quietly sympathetic yet distancing itself from any perceived involvement. Unsurprisingly, hardcore Sussex squad defenders are outraged, but public sentiment seems to be swinging the other way. After years of mixed messages and attacks, tolerance for Harry's tactics appears worn down. A new poll revealed an amazing 70% of British voters now support the defamation petition compared to only 20% opposed. It's a sign of how far the once adored prince has fallen since his North American exile. Even Winston Churchill's own grandson and Tory MP Sir Nicholas S.S., normally a bastion of royal tradition, has broken ranks to vocally back the suit, saying enough is enough. No family rose or character smear justifies the damage done without evidence or balance. The political establishment certainly seems to be drawing a line in the sand at long last over Harry's lawlessness. With momentum building, the question is, what happens next? Will the Attorney General grant the momentous request? risking even further rupture with Harry, or deny it to avoid setting an unwanted precedent that challenges family privacy. Regardless, this intensifying scrutiny underscores how permanently Harry may have sabotaged his once-favored son's status through unchecked hostility towards those closest to him. The consequences are rippling far beyond just internal royal rifts. It seems major. Thanks again for tuning into this explosive segment of Royal Report. I'll be sure to return with any new developments in what is shaping up to be one of the most dramatic confrontations between Britain's royals and government institutions in modern history. Please share your views below on whether Parliament's protest marks a principled stand or overreach. This has been Catherine signing off until next time.